Hello everyone, my name is Trishti Thapa. Today I am here to discuss about the mobilization of glenohumeral joint. So before jumping into the practical demonstration, let us first discuss in brief the anatomy about glenohumeral joint or shoulder girdle. So in upper limb, the shoulder girdle is comprised of three synovial articulations, namely acromioclavicular joint, glenohumeral joint, sternoclavicular joint and a functional joint between the scapula and thorax known as the scapulothoracic joint. Coming to glenohumeral joint, it is a ball and socket type of synovial joint. The head of the humerus is four times larger than the glenoid fossa for better articulation and mobility. The ligaments present in glenohumeral joint are capsular ligament, which is reinforced anteriorly by the superior, middle and inferior glenohumeral ligaments, transverse humeral ligament, coracohumeral ligament and glenoidal labrum. Now coming to the movements or osteokinematics of glenohumeral joint, there are in total six movements possible in glenohumeral joint, namely flexion, extension, abduction, adduction, medial rotation and lateral rotation. Coming to arthrokinematics of glenohumeral joint, first we will have to know about the concave convex rule. Anatomically, the head of the humerus is convex in nature and the glenoid fossa is concave in nature. Whenever a convex surface moves on a concave surface, the roll and slide occur in opposite direction to each other. Reciprocally, when a concave surface moves on a convex surface, the roll and slide occur in the same direction as that of the bony movement. There are five techniques used in the mobilization for glenohumeral joint, first being AP glide, anterior posterior glide, PA glide, posterior anterior glide, and SI glide that is superior inferior glide. The other two techniques would be compression and restriction. In order to increase the range of motion for flexion, generally anterior posterior glide is used. In order to increase the range of motion for extension, posterior anterior glide is used. In order to increase the range of motion for abduction, superior inferior glide is used. Joint compression is generally used to increase the nutrient supply to the joint, whereas joint destruction is used to break any type of additions present in the joint. Now let us jump into the practical demonstration for glenohumeral joint mobilization. Now coming to the demonstration for AP glide of glenohumeral joint, patient position is supine lying, therapist position would be walk standing or stride standing as per the convenience. The mobilization bed is set according to the height and comfortability of both patient and therapist. One hand of the therapist holds the medial aspect of the elbow of the patient. His forearm rests on the therapist's forearm and the thinar eminence of mobilizing hand is placed on the anterior aspect of humeral head. The mobilization is given from the anterior direction and the humeral head is glided towards posterior direction. The elbow and shoulder of mobilizing hand should be extended and the force is generated from the proximal or shoulder part of the therapist. The mobilization is given according to the grades of Matland or Claytonborn. Now coming to the demonstration for PA glide. PA glide can be given in two positions of the patient. First is supine lying position. Patient position is supine lying. Therapist position would be half kneeling towards the head side of the patient facing his leg. Now, the application of technique, the wave space of both the hands is placed over the glenohumeral joint, thumb is placed over the posterior aspect of humeral head and it is reinforced over one another and the fingers are placed anteriorly. Now, the mobilization is given from posterior to anterior direction and the humeral head is glided from posterior to anterior direction. Now, coming to the second method of PA glide demonstration, patient position for PA glide would be prone lying, therapist would be in walk standing or stride standing as per the convenience. One hand holds the medial aspect of elbow and the other hand is placed on the posterior aspect of humeral head. Mobilizing force is given from the thinar eminence of mobilizing hand which is ex in extended position and the force is generated from the shoulder or proximal part of the therapist. Now, moving on to superior inferior glides. Superior inferior glides can be given in three ways. The first technique for superior inferior glide would be in supine lying position. Therapist position would be walk standing facing towards the leg of the patient. 
One hand holds the hand of the patient and another hand holds the elbow of the patient and in walk standing position in a to and fro motion the humeral head is glided in the inferior direction. Now the second technique for superior inferior glide would be patient in supine lying position. Therapist position would be half kneeling towards the head end of the patient facing his leg. The thumb is reinforced over the greater tubercle of the humeral head and then the humeral head is glided towards the inferior direction. The elbow of the therapist is in extended position and the mobilizing force is generated from the shoulder or proximal part of the therapist. Now the third technique for superior inferior glide would be the patient in supine lying position, therapist in walk or stride standing facing towards the leg of the patient. One hand is placed on the distal aspect of acromane process, another is placed at the elbow of the patient. The humeral head is glided inferiorly with a mobilizing force generated from the proximal part of the therapist. Now moving on to compression of the glenohumeral joint, patient is in supine lying position, therapist would be in walk or stride standing. One hand is placed on the medial side of the elbow, the palm of the mobilizing hand is placed on the lateral aspect of humerus and a compressive force is given towards the body of the patient. Now coming on to the demonstration for distraction of glenohumeral joint, patient position is in supine lying position. He should come as close to the edge of the treatment couch. Therapist position is in semi squat position. One hand is placed on the humeral head and another hand is placed on the elbow of the patient such that the elbow of the patient is rested upon the hip of the therapist. Destructive force is applied away from the joint by laterally flexing the trunk of the therapist. With this, we conclude with a demonstration for glenohumeral joint mobilization. Thank you.